Too much to drink last night, huh? Good morning. Buenos dias a todo el mundo. Buenos dias. Okay, well, that was, that's okay. Hi, Mark. Hi, Josh. Hi, buddy. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. So welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is Josh Long. I'm a Spring Developer Advocate on the Spring Team. And I'm Mark Heckler. I'm also a Spring Developer Advocate on the Spring Team. <laughs> We're going to go through a lot of stuff today. Uh, oh. Isn't that nice? Oh, that's it's a new slide. I'm not, I'm not yeah. really. Oh, oh. And that's me. You, you know me. So. Oh, there it is. OK, it's. OK. Good. Oh, we're we're going to go through a lot done. of stuff today. We're going to cover a <laughs> lot of stuff. So uh, I encourage you to grab this GitHub repository. It's online. It's available. If you have questions, you can follow on, along there. Anything to add, my friend? Um, follow us on Twitter, ping us via email. Uh, we have a short time this morning, but we have like unlimited time afterwards. So uh, if we covered something too quickly, if you wanted to hear about something else, ask us. We're happy to talk about it at length. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very good. OK, so we have a lot of stuff to cover. We're going to talk about, today we're going to talk about Reactive Spring, and we're going to look at some of, the ecos some of the changes in the ecosystem that support reactive programming. Uh, like I said, like we said, that code is available online. Uh, we, we want. We, we, well, did the lights just get lighter? OK. I wasn't just having like a stroke or something, right? I think, I think they turned on the sun lamps. So. Oh, OK. Very good. So we're going to talk about the, uh, some of the bits that are new in the Spring ecosystem to support reactive programming. It's not hard to sort of understand how we got here, right? Uh, we've seen a lot of organizations in the last uh, decade or so look for ways to deliver value into production uh, faster. you know, And that's something that we care about as, as, a, uh, as a company at Pivotal. We care about helping developers deliver value into production faster and more safely. And a lot of these organizations look for ways to go faster, and they, they move to this microservices architecture. Microservices makes it easier for organizations to decompose their large applications in, into smaller batches. And when you move to this architecture, you run into complexity. There's complexity that is implied by the distribution of work across the network. And there's complexity involved in moving data around from one place to another. Remember, not what, what used to be done in process is now I.O., right? You've got bits moving back and forth across services. And that I.O. is expensive. So we need a way to make it more performant, more e efficient uh, to move data back and forth across services, uh, especially in input and output bound um, sort of processing. So we've seen that in the Java ecosystem since Java 1.4, uh, there has been good support in, uh, in the JDK itself for NIO, right? the, uh, the new input-output event eventing model. That has given us some support for asynchronous IO, but it's very low level. Right? We need higher level operators to work on top of that if we're going to be able to truly take advantage of that. And so the Java ecosystem, the JVM ecosystem, has done a very good job in the last 15 uh, plus years, filling in some of the gaps. And you've seen some really interesting technologies that have come out of the, uh, the ecosystem right now, right? In the last uh, seven, eight years, you've seen uh, our reactor project, of course, at VMware first and now at Pivotal. You've seen um, uh, 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 Lightbend, you know, started as TypeSafe. They have Akka. There's RxJava, which started as, was inspired by the Rx extensions from for .NET from Microsoft Research. That became RxJava and Netflix. Uh, 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 Red Hat have something called Vertex. There's a, a lot of great options, a lot of higher level APIs that allow us to truly build systems and to think about systems as being a series of potentially asynchronous uh, and potentially unlimited sort of events that we can respond to. These frameworks help solve a very important question. They help fill a gap in the JDK. The JDK itself has right now answers for three out of four questions. The first question, of course, is if I want to return a single synchronous value, how do I do that? Well, just return t or string, right? If I have a method, I return a string. That's one synchronous single value. If I want to return a collection of, single, of, of values you know, synchronously, how do I do that? Well, I can just return a JDK collection of t. And if I want to return a single value asynchronously, how do I return that? Well, I can use a completable future, right? The completable future makes it easy for me to say that this value is not here right now, but will call you back when it's available. What has been missing is an easy way to say, how do I return a set of values that may be available later on asynchronously? Right? How do I say this set of values isn't here right now, but it it'll, will call you back when it's here? And that has been missing. Right? We need that, that mechanism in order to build these kinds of systems based on this asynchronous I.O. So these different projects have all solved it in their own way which led to a very natural sort of uh, need for some sort of convergence, some sort of standardization. 
That resulted in the Reactive Streams initiative, right? So about four years ago, uh, the different uh, parties involved in these different companies all sat down and sort of fleshed out or extracted the really important bits, the really important concepts from all their different technologies, and that has become something called the Reactive Streams Initiative. The Reactive Streams Initiative is super, super simple. At its heart, at its heart, there's four types, four very simple types. There's a publisher. A publisher produces values. A subscriber can, take it, can uh, you know, uh, subscribe or be notified of those values, and in so doing, it creates a subscription. And if you have something that both publishes values and subscribes to values, that's called a processor. That's it. That's the whole API, the whole Reactive Streams initiative. Right? So that, that gives us a very solid foundation for interoperability. If you are using these reactive types, you have a way for, uh, for us to talk to, uh, albeit sometimes with adapters and sometimes with uh, uh, you know, conversions, with these different APIs. You can actually have processing happen on one and then move it to the other by interoperating on these base types. But publisher, uh, you know, the publisher type, while it helps us answer that fourth question, that fourth use case, uh, isn't really enough, right? First of all, what we want is to be able to see that answer, and we want to see that answer reflected in the JDK itself. And so thankfully, in Java 9, we'll have Java Util Concurrent Flow, which will uh, basically you know, package up the, the Reactive Streams initiative as part of the JDK. So that solves part of the problem. And the other thing that we, uh, that we need is higher level operators. I don't want just publisher and, subscri and a subscriber, right? I need something else. I want to be able to treat this stream of potentially unlimited asynchronous values and work with them in the s with the same ease, with the same agility as I can, uh, you know, a collection of values, like I can with a JDK collection API. And so here, the, these different projects in the ecosystem can provide value, building on top of the Reactive Streams initiative. That's what Project Reactor does for us. Project Reactor makes it easy for us to, to build a DSL to handle things like uh, you know, composing different uh, publishers to uh, you know, filter, transform, you know, uh, do things on these different streams of values, just like we might with the JDK. When we, when we look at the Reactor project, there's two specializations, two specific types that are interesting. The first is called a mono. It doesn't mean monkey. Yeah. Mono is a, a publisher that produces zero or one value. And then there's a flux. A flux is a publisher that produces zero to uh, n values, potentially unlimited amount of values. So what we're going to do today, with that background in mind, is we're going to build an application, uh, you know, a simple, trivial, nonsensically trivial uh, sort of application that manages movies over the internet. Now. In English, you can say that a, a movie is a flick, or if you have multiple movies, it's flicks, right? So if we had some way of managing movies over the net, some way of managing flicks over the net, some way of managing flux over the net, we could call it Netflux. <laughs> so that's what we're going to try and do today, is build a, just a very, very simple Netflix service uh, using the, uh, the Reactor project, but we're not going to use just the Reactor project by itself. The Reactor project by itself is a good start, but it doesn't really help us with building services, uh, managing data, doing security, doing all these other things that we need to do and that we're used to being able to do with ease in the Spring ecosystem. So starting with Spring 5, which is coming this summer, um, uh, we have a, uh, we've integrated the uh, sort of Reactive support into Spring 5 itself, and then that serves as the baseline for Spring data, for Spring Security, for Spring Boot and Spring Cloud. So you'll see in the next 12 months, you'll see a whole bunch of different releases all packaging in and integrating this reactive support wherever possible and appropriate. So what do you say? You want to build a, a, new, a new service with me today, my friend? No. No? <laughs> sure, okay. let's do it. Let's do this. OK, so we're going to start here today. Those were our slides. I hope you like those uh, slides. We worked, as you know, very hard on them. Now, I have, um, I have moved to Linux, and now I'm using my friend Mark's laptop here. So you'll see me really going very slowly today, because I've forgotten the key command. So uh, here we go. We're going to try and build a new application. We're at start.spring.io. Anybody who knows me knows this is my second favorite place on the internet. My first favorite place on the internet, of course, is production. I love production. You should love production. You should bring your friends, bring your family. Go as early and often as possible. The weather is amazing. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to build a new service today. We're going to use Spring Boot 2.0 M1. So this is not to be released. Spring Boot won't, won't be released until tentatively into, in, in December, right? So we're going to use the first milestone, which just uh, shipped a few days ago, uh, maybe a week ago. And we're going to build a service. Our, we're going to build our first service. We're going to build the, the, uh, the Flix, oh, oh, Flix, Flix. Flix Flux service, right? Now, Flix Flux service, you know, that's kind of a tongue twister. So you could say it's just the FFS, right? Or for flux sake. So what we're going to do is we're going to build an application that uses Lombok, which is a compile time annotation processor. We're going to use the reactive web support, and we're going to use the reactive Mongo support. And the, the reason, uh, you know, we, we can use a lot of different technologies here for data access. But you'll notice that we don't have in this list uh, reactive JPA. And that's because fundamentally, JPA at the very bottom of the stack doesn't support sort of reactive uh, interactions, right? There's some promising news uh, last year at Java 1. Oracle talked about potentially having support for uh, reactive JDBC. That's really good news. I mean, Oracle, if Oracle understands the need for this, then this says that everybody else understood it 10 years ago. So I'm very excited that we are now in a place where uh, you know, it's finally happening. So I think in another 10 years, maybe this will happen. Maybe we'll have reactive JPA. You know? I, give it, I give it 10 years. Um, but in the meantime, in the meantime, we can't really afford to, we're, you know, we're not going to try and ship reactive support on top of JPA, uh, and by, you know, we're not going to try and fake it. There's no point. If you stick uh, reactive types in front of JDBC and in front of JPI, all you're doing is moving synchronous blocking work to a thread. So now you have a less efficient API that's harder to use. So there's no point in doing that, right? So we're going to use a, a, a natively reactive data access technology. So we have a lot of options here. We can use Cassandra. We can use Redis. Uh, you can use MongoDB. If you, if you want to lose all of your data for random reasons, at, for no, no, apparent reason for, uh, no apparent reason at random times, then use MongoDB. And if you want to lose all your data reactively, then you use reactive MongoDB, right? So we're going to use reactive MongoDB for that as well. We're going to hit Generate. And this will give us a new zip file. Uh-oh. Go to the desktop here. RMRF. Oh, we actually want yeah. this one. OK. And so we're going to save our new service here to the desktop, the FluxFlix service. I get a little nervous when he does RMRF on yeah. my machine. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, it's probably fine. Probably so, fine. It's probably fine. <laughs> but maybe. Maybe it's not. He is a little rusty. With yeah, the, I'm, uh, my key command foo is bad. Advanced OS here. Oh, so I don't know. Uh, does that not work? So we're going to open this up in our IDE. OK. And my question to you, my friends, is can you see that? Oh, that's, no, that's the wrong. Uh, oh, oh. Did I forget the key? Command shift O. Command shift O, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So can you see that in the back? OK, very good. Oh, so yeah. we have here the reactive support. These are starters in Spring Boot. So already we've got integrated uh, support for Spring Web Flux, which is the web runtime inside of Spring Framework 5. We've got the uh, reactive uh, MongoDB support. And we've got Lombok, right? So now we can build our application. And we're going to go here, and we're just going to build a, a, an application to manage entities of type movie, right? So we'll use. Uh, we're going to use um, Spring Data MongoDB, and we're going to say that this is a document. And we're going to want to create some uh, getters and setters. We're going to create some fields. So we're going to have a string ID like this, and we'll have a, a string title for the movie itself. Now, the title, I'm sorry, the ID has to be a unique, auto, you know, a unique uh, surrogate uh, value there, a, a primary key. So we're going to create an ID annotation. And the right thing to do here is to, to create getters and setters and accessors and constructors and toString and all that stuff. But I don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to use Lombok instead to do this. This is a compile time annotation processor. It's going to automatically generate the getters and setters for me. Uh, I can also create a noargs constructor, an all argument constructor, et cetera. And then what I want to do is I want to save data to the database. I want to create some records into the, uh, to the database. And, and again, normally, if you're used to using uh, Spring data, then you know that we have this idea of a repository, right? And this should seem very familiar. If you've used Spring data before, then you know that you, you know where to start, right? This is the benefit of this uh, support in the Spring ecosystem. It's just well integrated. It's the same kind of experience as you've used before. So we're going to create a uh, repository using the reactive Mongo repository support. 
And, you know, you'll see that this is fairly similar to what you've used before, except that the methods now accept publishers and the return fluxes and monos. So again, these are the specializations. Mono is not monkey, it means uh, zero or one. Flux means zero to n, right? So we have the same kind of stuff here. We have reactive sorting repository, you know, find all given a sorting condition, all of that as, uh, as you would expect. Now, with this in place, we can create some sample data. So we need some, rec we need some movie titles, right? So yeah. sample movies, CLR implements, command line runner, and I'm gonna hit Alt Enter because that's what we do when we're trying to implement it. Good. And what I want to do is I want to create a, um, I want to use this movie repository of ours to get the job done, right? So I'm gonna create the repository and lay all around. There we are. Alt Enter. Add a constructor. So Spring is going to create that bean for us, assuming we annotate it with that component, and it's going to start up, and the application is going to have the, uh, the repository and the constructor, uh, and then we can save some records into the database. So I guess the normal thing, the first thing I would do here is I just maybe create some, some titles, you know? We, so we, we need, need movie titles here. Yeah. Can you help us? I mean, this is the audience participation part right here. We can think of a few of them. One of, them, one of my favorites that our friend Phil Webb uh, gave us is, is th what we want is movie titles that have to do with the theme of reactive programming, of the, the reactor project, of Spring Web Flux, of, of all of this stuff. So Phil Webb gave us my favorite one, which is Silence of the Lambdas. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I like uh, Itu Mono Tambien. Itu Mono. Si? Sí? Okay. Tambien. Yes? What do you, what, who else has got another one? Come on, throw it out there. Anyone? It's very important. By the way, it's okay to interrupt the discussion at any time during our talk to throw out a better movie. We yeah. will happily stop what this, we're doing this and is add important. it. The it's whole, very important. The whole demo just falls yeah. apart if we don't have it's good really, titles. If we don't have Come good on. movies, then there's no point. How about uh, Enter the Mono Void? Oh, yes. Yeah, that's good. What was the movie? Uh, there was a movie with Flux the, uh, in it, Flux right? Capacitor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which movie had the, the Flux Capacitor in, in it? Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Back to the Future? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Is see. there an anime that people know that has the word flux in it? Something like... Uh, yes. Yeah, that's it. How about, how about Meet the Fluxers? Meet the Fluxers. Yeah. Anybody else? The Fluxinator? Yeah. Anybody? What? Oh. Vote? Lord of the Flux. Lord right? of the. Oh right? yes. That's, and the Flux. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, was there anything after the first one? I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> What else do we have? It should be some kind of superhero movie, right? Yeah. Yeah? Anybody? Mr. Fluxtastic? Okay, I like that. Okay. The Fluxtastic 4. Yes. That was a horrible movie, but I think it'll be better this time around. Uh. Hope Springs Eternal, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh. Sorry? Okay. Oh, yeah. Anyone else? I think we've a... What's that? 1200, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. I like that. Okay. okay. <laughs> How come we didn't think of that? Okay. Okay, we're going to stop there, but like Josh said, this is important, and if yeah. we don't have some critical mass, it'll probably fail. The rest of the thing will just fall apart, so if you think of anything, just yell it out. Yeah. Okay? The most important thing we do here today, really, and I flew right, to Spain right. for these movies, so there's that. Okay, so I guess the right thing to do, maybe, is just to say, okay, I'm going to visit every single title, uh, and then I'm going to create a new movie into the database, right? So. Uh, move repository, new movie, and I'm going to create a unique, you know, random uh, ID here. Dot to string, and I'm going to save the title, right? Now that should work, right? That seems like it should work, surely, should right? But uh, seems, if I run, light. if I run this, what happens? Uh, parsing other than, Java. Other than taking a while. Oh, okay. Okay. Oops. Yeah, something. Port. Something's not right. Did did we did we pay homage to the Mongo to the Mongod? I mean, we need to. We need to bow to the Mongod, right? Oh, I did forgot we, about the Mongod. 
See, there's the first problem. You always have to offer a sacrifice to the Mon God because otherwise he or she won't lose your data. So we've got that. There you go. It's very important. Okay, so here we go, up and running. Are, are we there yet? Are we there yet? I still think it's not going to work, and I'm not sure why. Yeah. Oh, look at that. There's no data. There's no data in the, uh, in the, in the console here. Why, why is that? Uh, and, and we don't know that anything has been written. And in fact, if we go down here and say, move your repository, uh, you know, we can confirm that everything is, is there or not, right? But uh, the problem is that that call isn't going to actually happen. This isn't going to actually happen until we force it to happen, right? Because remember, oh, right. What, we, what we have back here from the save is a publisher. So it's not going to actually execute the action until we have a terminal condition. We have, we have a, a way of triggering the, the execution, just like with the Java 8 streams. So what I want to do is I want to subscribe to the result. I want to tell it to, okay, go ahead. And there's a simple no argument subscribe here. So that, that will trigger the action. Then here, we can see that I have a, another subscribe call, right? This subscribe call is, is part of the publisher. And the API actually has a few different interesting overloads. There's a version that takes a consumer, which is the, uh, the, for the movie. The second argument can take a th an exception, any exception that's thrown during the processing. And the third one takes a runnable that gets executed after everything else is done, right? So all I want in this case is just to, oops, is just to have a, a, a callback that confirms everything is there. Now let's see if that works, okay? Reformat the code. Now we're cooking, except that all that extra data is there. Look at that. M Mongo has managed to not lose all of my data. Yes. Right? Uh, this one time. A broken clock is true twice a day, right? So even Mongo can save data by accident. So we, we see that there's a problem here. I've got too much data. So what I want to do is I want to delete all of that data here. I can say movie repository dot delete all. And I want this to happen before we call that data, uh, before we write the data. So I could do this, but that doesn't feel very good, does it? My girlfriend, she would not be very impressed with me if I wrote that code. Here, we have a reactive API, and I've gone, we've gotten all this really great stuff, and I'm blocking. My girlfriend would be very unimpressed with me. She would not think I'm very smart at all if I did this, right? She would ask me to do something a little bit more sophisticated. So instead of doing that, what I want to say is, on subscription, I want to, I want to, uh, uh, when, when this is all done, I want to call uh, the, not the consumer, because we don't have a, res we have a void, which is not something that we want to listen to. So we're not going to send that. We don't care about the exceptions right now. What we want is to run in the runnable here, right? So I'm going to pass in all of this inside the last runnable, and we'll paste that in there. So that's a, a composed call, a dependent call, right? So I'm going to here uh, run the code again. It's going to delete everything, and then it's going to run our logic inserting data into the database, right? So there's our records, only those records, and nothing more. Uh -huh. Not bad. Not bad. So we've got data into the database. Now what? Well, I mean, we've kind of covered the reactive portion from here down, right? I mean, we're, we're storing it, and for the time being, at least, Mongo is keeping it. So that's good, and we're able to retrieve it. Uh, so at this point, let's, let's define a service API. Uh, let's, uh, let's see if I can find my way around my own machine now again. Uh, so we're going to start with uh, creating a component, and we'll call this class, uh, let's say, flux, flux, flux. Wow, it's like I'm not even typing. Flux, flux service, right? Uh, now I'm going to uh, inject, whoops, a movie repository. And yeah, my voice, I, was, I sp uh, spent yesterday evening uh, at the uh, mixer in a dinner, and I wound up uh, speaking really loudly, so now I'm kind of breaking up. I feel like I'm going through puberty again, so if, I, if my voice cracks, uh, please just bear with me. By the way, Josh asked me to be here because he wanted to class it up a little bit. I'm here for the good looks. <laughs> I, I guess I should have warned you up front that, uh, that, that we like to have fun with our talks, so we try to throw in humor. It's fun uh, for us. Nothing about, we didn't yeah, say anything yeah, about sorry, your fun. Sorry, you're, you're yeah. here to have to live through it. My wife tells me I'm unintentionally funny. <laughs> so, um, so if I say something funny, believe me, it's not because I tried. Uh, but if, if it's not funny and you think that we were trying to be, we do take pity laughs. So, so that's, uh, that's good. So what kind of an API would we want? I mean, we're, we're probably going to want to be able to return, uh, to, to retrieve maybe a uh, monotype movie, right? So we can... Uh, a single switch. movie. Yeah. So like uh, find by ID, for instance. So we want to be able to retrieve a movie by its ID. 
Uh, so we'll just do a return this dot flux flux oops, let's see, movie repository dot find by ID. Pardon me. See, I had all kinds of great jokes lined up for uh, trying to fumble around on Josh's Linux machine. <laughs> uh, and then he, f he flipped on me and uh, all my, I stayed up all night, studied Linux, you know, cause uh, <laughs> I don't know. But he uses a special version called Brasky Linux. Yes. Uh, and uh, that's, that's named after the, uh, the immortal Bill Brasky. It's true. Yes. Uh, and and it's, uh, you have to type commands in a long dead language that nobody even speaks anymore. <laughs> so I, I spent all night practicing on it, and now we're back to this, so I'm, I'm just lost. Uh, we also want to be able to return a, a flux of type movie. Uh, so let's see, say all uh, find all movies, okay. right? Uh, so we'll probably do something like return this movie repository, find all, uh, and that's pretty much a pass-through, so that's okay, right? And then, um, because we, let's kick this up a little bit. We want to make this interesting. Mouse event? Uh, mouse event, oh wow. Yes, let's make this really interesting. Um, so we haven't defined movie event. I, uh, I, and I forgot to mention too, occasionally just to make sure everybody is paying attention, I will intentionally put typos into my code. So if I do that, it's up to you in the front row to catch that. If not, it's your fault, okay? So, if he, right. starts, if yeah. he starts writing EJBs, run the stage. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. Okay, so what I'm going to do is create a, another domain object called uh, movie event. And I'm going to use Lombok because I'm a lazy programmer. Right? Lazy programmers are smart programmers. They don't reinvent the wheel. Uh, when you have something that uh, helps you leverage uh, your efforts a little better and concentrate on the important stuff, the, the value add stuff, that's what we like to do. So I'm going to uh, create a class. We'll call it uh, movie event. And what since are we, I already did that, not mouse event, right? And now what are we doing the movie event? Well, wouldn't it be cool, Why? since we're going to be streaming these excellent, uh, excellent reactive movies, wouldn't it be cool to see what everyone else is streaming? Like when somebody starts streaming a particular movie, to see that pop up. I mean, we're in this full interactive mode, right? <clears throat> so when we're watching our Flux Flicks, uh, wouldn't it be cool to see who's watching what when they come online and, and kind of see that stream go by? So we're going to do that. I mean, what could go wrong, right? It's a stream of streams. Are we... Uh... Right. I mean, we could, we could say that, right? Yeah. So we're going to keep, uh, we're going to, uh, keep track of, uh, like to say, the movie and uh, let's say the date, right? So that, that gives us the kind of the key bits of information we need. Uh, so now, let's return a flux of movie events. Uh, we'll just call this simply get events. Uh, but, we, but we don't actually have people logging into our website. We're not the, yeah. this is net flux. We have zero users right now. Where yeah. are we gonna get that data? Well, if we had a real working service, right, we would, we would be able to retrieve this information. We would be tracking this. When somebody starts streaming, we'd have this. But we don't. I mean, we're kind of just faking it at this point. So what could we do? Is there we, some way to generate We probably thing? could generate this stuff, right? I mean, there should be some way to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's, let's start with this. So let's do a uh, flux of type movie event, and we'll call this, cleverly enough, event flux, right? And we'll do a flux dot uh, from stream. Yeah, okay. yeah, sound good. And we'll do a stream dot uh, generate, right? And let's see, we'll do a new movie event, uh, and we'll pass it our movie, right? And we'll do a new date. Uh, yeah, that should work. And then let's return our event flux and let's zip it with uh, another uh, flux. So let's do a uh, flux dot interval, uh, and we're, we'll do a duration of one second. What this will do is create a flux, kind of an emitter. It'll do a pulse every second, so it'll emit an incrementing value every second. And we're going to zip that up with our event flux. And just like a zipper in your hoodie, it's one tooth for each one. So it kind of gates. One that, from the that left, creation. one from the right, one from the left, one from the right. And it, and it slows <clears> that, <throat> that, uh, that kind of nonstop pace of our event flux to one per second just by gating it with our, uh, with our interval flux. Uh, so now let's do a uh, map and let's map that to tuple two and so we'll get T1. Is the result of that, what is the result of zip width? If you were to assign that to a variable. What do you have in the intermediate variable there? It's a flux. Of what? Of tuple two? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I just, <laughs> I, I didn't know there was going to be oh. a test. Oh, oh my sorry. gosh. Okay. So um, are, are, do we have pretty much what we need at this point? Yeah. Can I, we go with this? I think that I would like it if I could just pass in a string ID. So can we <sighs> make it so that this actually finds the movie 
for us? Okay, well, let's try that. Let's do a string, string. Okay, front row, I saved you that time, but keep on your toes, all right? <clears throat> uh, so now what do we want to do? Let's see, we could do a by, I find by ID, right? And we'll pass it the ID, which then yeah. we can, oops, do a flat map mini, right? Right. Uh, let's see, so we'll, we'll take that movie, right? Yeah. And let's see. This is kind of on the spot uh, coding here. So, um, parenthesis. What do I do? do, do, do Closing parenthesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and then uh, let's see. Return. And what am I missing? So, what um, you're doing there is taking pretty much a mono with one value and then saying, I'm going to turn that one value into multiple values so you get a flux back. Sure. Right, that's what the flat map mini is. Yes. That's convenient. Flat map that thing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay, very good. So we've got a service. Are we done? I don't know. Probably not, right? We have to... It seems like a good place to stop, but why stop, right? Why stop? We have time. So let's... Uh, we can build an let's API. Do let's, let's do a little more. Let's do more. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. So All right. I want to build a service. I want to build a REST API. And in, inside of... Um, Spring 5, we have this new API called Spring Web Flux. Spring Web Flux is a, a reactive web runtime uh, as well as an API that, uh, actually it's two different APIs. There's a functional reactive API, and then there's just this sort of uh, regular style, regular REST controller style API. And so you can use at REST controller like this. You can say, I want to have an at REST controller and uh, Flux, Flix, REST controller. And you can create an endpoint, uh, you know, at git mapping, movies, uh, and then say public flux of movie, you know, all. You could do this kind of thing, no problem, and that would work, but this is, you know, this is very familiar. If, you've already, if you're already using Spring MVC, you'll, you'll appreciate how easy it is to map to this new component model, but one of my favorite new features, and I'm sure I speak uh, with Mark here, uh, one, of our, one of our favorite new features here is in Spring Web Flux, there's something called the Functional Reactive uh, APIs, right? And so this is actually a, a, a way of describing endpoints and the, the mappings for those endpoints in a single place. And it's very familiar to anybody who's ever used, for example, Sinatra in the Ruby, and Ruby world. Uh, there's a, a Scalatra in the Scala world, Spark Java, for example. There's a lot of really good examples of this kind of approach. And I'm just really happy to see it here uh, in the API, right, in Spring Web Flux itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to des describe, uh, scroll down, we're going to describe these functional reactive endpoints. Um, route configuration. Okay, I'm going to make this a configuration class, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to create a bean that implements or that provides a bean of type router function, and when I do this, I'm going to inject the really recently created Flexflex service, and I'm going to use this to create my predicates. I'm going to say I'm going to create a route, and in order to create the route, I need a request predicate uh, dot get. So I'm going to say movies. And then my job now is to return or to provide a handler function. And the contract here is very simple, right? New handler function of server response handling a server request. Well, I could do this. I could certainly copy and paste and inline my code here. But I think that's a fair bit tedious, right? I want to actually keep that logic, that, route, that handling logic elsewhere. So one option might just be to have a little you know, static class route handler. It's still a bean, but it's kind of in, 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 uh, it's scoped to this one little configuration class, uh, so you won't actually have it in your, in your logic somewhere. And what I want to do is I want to create an endpoint that ha matches a, you know, this Lambda contract. Remember, this could be a Lambda, right? So we could actually uh, hit Control-Z, Alt-Enter. That could be a Lambda, very, very succinct, I think, but I still want to move that logic into some other place so I can test that independent of the web tier. So there's my, uh, my approach, my... my uh, Re method reference that I'm going to create. And this method reference is going to handle retrieving all of them. OK, and then we have to have another one to return just the, uh, uh, just the single request by ID. OK, and then we need another one to return the um, streams, right? So let's create streams. And we can now use our uh, Flux Flix service to, to do all this heavy lifting. So Flux Flix service, uh, create, an, create that dependency, inject that in the constructor. And here, our job is to say, OK, we want to return all of them. This one is the easiest one to do. So server response.ok.body, and we say ffs.find all movies. And we need to tell it 
what kind of t payload we're sending back. Remember, we're not using uh, the traditional sort of HTTP message converters here. This is a reactive runtime through and through. So everything is changed that, you know, to, to reflect that. First of all, you'll notice that by default, our web service is not Tomcat or Jetty or Undertow. It's actually Netty. It's a net, it's a, yeah, thank you. It's a net rewritten Netty web server, right? So there's that on the bottom there. Now, Control. Yeah. Um, the, uh, so there's that. And then the other thing that is interesting is that in the, the reactive world, we don't want to assume that we can get to the end of the file and then just start parsing, right? That end of the file may be a long time before it actually happens. So we can tell our reactive runtime to frame the JSON, to say, okay, here's a single record, write that out. Here's a single record, write it out. Here's a single record, write it out. And it can do this forever instead of saying, here's 10 records, write them all out, right? This means it can uh, actually frame payloads here. So that's what we're saying. We're saying write these out as a collection of potentially unlimited uh, movies in my publisher. This one is slightly more involved. I'm going to say that I want to find one record, and I need to get the parameter, right? I want to create a path variable called movie ID, right? Uh, and otherwise, it's fairly similar to what we just did, right? Uh, so I'm going to actually describe a path variable in my, in my mappings here pretty soon. And then finally, for this last one, this last one uh, is Interesting, we're streaming all of the data, aren't we? So we could use REST, but that would be, you know, uh, clients aren't expecting that with that kind of protocol. It's not necessarily built for that. Uh, we want to signal to the client that this is intentionally going to last forever. We're going to, as long as there is a service running, this log will keep going. And so for that, the server sent event uh, sort of content type is more appropriate. We could use WebSockets as well, but what we want is something that is uh, purpose built for server side push. And server send events is a unidirectional way of doing that. It says, I'm going to push data to the client, right? So here, we're going to get the events uh, by the movie ID, right? Movie ID. Uh, and we're going to say that the results that come back are of type movie event dot class. But we're not going to just use regular JSON, like I said. So we have to actually uh, turn this into the right content type. Sorry, content type even, media type, type dot uh, text event stream. And there we go. There's our, our, our uh, sort of service end event stream. It's the same kind of thing. We're using fluxes, right? Where before, if you used service end events in Spring MVC, we had to do some gymnastics. We had to do some extra work to tell the client, uh, to tell the Spring MVC API, we're going to send a potentially unlimited amount of data. We couldn't just return it from a method handler because it wasn't natural on top of the servlet API. Now, with Spring WebFlux, you can run Spring WebFlux's API on top of servlet 3.1 containers, but those servlet 3.1 APIs aren't going to give you the full benefits of the Netty-based runtime because parts of the servlet API are blocking. That's just part of the problem with the API. And, and so if you're OK with that, then you can use it on embedded undertow or Tomcat or whatever. But for our purposes, it's very nice to be able to use this fully non-blocking Netty-based runtime. All right, so let's now go back to our, our mappings here. right? Uh, let's go ahead and change this to talk to the uh, route handler instead. And we'll say handler. And in this thing, we want to say handler um, all. That's one of them. And then we'll create a, a, um, another route. And we're going to say we want to get another endpoint called movies movie ID. This is the one that shows just the ID, so handler by ID. And we want to create another route still, request predicates dot get movies movie ID streams, right? Event, events, right? Events, even better. Ah, no. Santa Maria. OK, handler streams. There we go. There's our, 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 our code. Now, this is a little verbose. Uh, you know, it's, it's fine, but I prefer, you know, the, for ease of reading, since this is basically configuration data, it's nice to use the DSL to its fullest extent possible. So we're going to use static imports to remove a lot of that, uh, whoops to remove a lot of that tedious um, code, right? So alt add on demand static, much better, much cleaner, to, much easier to read. So let's try this now, control R, and we'll confirm that. Uh, confirm HTTP localhost 8080 forward slash movies. OK, that seems to be working. 
right? We can go now to uh, this one, 12 miles. Copy. Command Z. Yeah. That didn't work at all. Let's see. Yeah. Control E. Thank Sarah, you. thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so that one gives us our data. Good. Now it's events. And if we look at that, it's sending the service and event stream back as we expect. All right. Not bad. Not bad but at all. What good is a service without something to talk to it? Right? It's, it's like it's just shouting. Just shouting into listening. the ethos, out, so. out into the audience. All right. So you're probably wondering why we couldn't have some kind of a reactive web client, right? No one, really? Were you wondering that? Yes. I was wondering that. OK, good. Is anyone still awake out there? OK, a couple people. That's good. It's a start. Uh, so what we're going to do is, is create a fully reactive web client. Uh, and this is good, right? So, we can, uh, so we, can, we can take this all the way to its logical conclusion. We started at the database. Well, sort of. We started our application communicating with the database. Don't call Mongo a database, okay. please. Well, we started with Mongo. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, hold on. Can we do that again? Oh, yeah. Here, here, do that again. Go, go, go. Quick, quick, quick. Uh, it hurts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go, go, go. All right. So we're good. Uh, so we won't need Mongo, right? We don't need Mongo. Because we already have a feature that loses our data for us. Right. It's losing it service. just fine. So, okay. So that's fine. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the project. Uh, so we'll save that down. Let's see. Do, do, do. Uh, yeah. Um, Gosh, am I on the desktop here? No, nope. Command Shift D. Nope, there we go. Okay. Uh, so let's open that. And let's open that. And we should be back in business. So, uh, how are we going to test this? We want to test this again fully reactively with our reactive web client. Why uh, don't we just use the REST template? I don't know. Why don't we? So, the REST, the REST template's a, the workhorse of the web ecosystem in Spring, right? It's a, it's a blocking. Uh, uh, client by default, and um, we could use that, but it's not going to be great for server send events, for example, right? We can't tell it to just keep reading data uh, continuously. Um, so there's a completely different API now um, uh, that that is optimized for these reactive use cases, right? It's called the web client. So I think we might use that. What do you think? I think that's a good idea. Everybody else? Nobody cares. Okay, that's good. All right, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and recreate our uh, domain objects here. Okay. Uh, because I like to type. Oh, yeah. It seems fine. I'm finally kind of getting back into the hang of things here with my own machine. Uh, okay. So let's see, we're going to track again uh, the movie and, whoops, let's see, private. As soon as I say that, wow, I'm going to put, uh, put the front row to work here. Okay, so we, we have our domain established. So how are we going to test this? Well, let's, uh, let's first create a bean. Uh, in which we create, return our web client, right? Uh, so return uh, web client dot create. Now there are a few different ways of doing this, but what I typically like to do is, is kind of start with the uh, the root here, uh, the root URI, and we're going to go with localhost eighty eighty slash movies, and that kind of establishes our context moving forward. Seems Convenient. seems reasonable, right? So now I'm going to uh, create a, a, a bean. Uh, that implements command line render interface, and we'll call this demo, cleverly enough. Uh, I'm no better at naming things than I am at, at jokes, but that is one of the hardest problems in CS, so right. it seems reasonable. Uh, so now I'm going to uh, just kick this off here. Uh, I'm going to start. Let's see, how do we want to start? Let's start with our client, and we'll do a get, right? And I, since we're going to just be hitting the root URI for movies, we're going to get back our, our list of movies first, so that seems reasonable. Uh, and we're going to exchange that, and then we're going to flat map that, and we're going to take our client, take our client response, right? Did I do that? Okay, and we're going to take that and convert that to a flux. So we're going to take our client response and break out the fluxes of that of type movie, right? Which kind of makes sense. So you're framing it again. You're you're giving it the chance to not load everything, right? Yes, yes, we are. And then let's filter out. Uh, what do we want to filter? What, what, what was your favorite movie? I'm kind of partial to The Silence of the Lambdas. I just think it's hard to beat that. 12 right? Monos was kind of a Oh, that's true. That's, kind that's of a winner. so good. Let's, let's go with that. OK. So let's, uh, let's filter one. our movie. And uh, let's say movie.getTitle. Uh, 
title, uh, let's see, dot equals ignore case, and let's say 12 monos, let's say monos, okay, right? Yeah. Okay, so now what do we, what do, we do with this? Uh, let's subscribe to it. So that will get back, hopefully, hopefully that will get back our one movie, right? So what are we going to do with that one movie? Make the hmm? navigation window go away. Uh, what the, what? Command one. Command one. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, oh, that's not good. What did you just do? I don't know what I just did. What did I just do? Command one. I just did what you said. Oh, there, there we go. go. We're still missing up there, buddy. Look. Oh, so it is. Is that important? What just We're happened? back. Okay. Oh, that was, okay. We found the button for turning off uh, the mirroring. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, at Could least. use that never. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to take that movie, and yeah. we're going to put it in a box, yeah. and then we're going to put that box in another box. No, right. I'm just kidding. Okay, so, so the first thing we're going to do is do another client get, right? Uh -huh. And then we'll, uh, we'll take the, and, and go to a different URI. So we're going to uh, map to a particular ID. We're going to take that movie's ID, and we're going to pull up the events based on that ID, right? For that ID, for that movie, I should say. Uh, so we're going to do a get ID to bring that through, right? Uh, and then what we'll want to do is exchange that, and then we'll flat map mini that puppy, right? Yeah. And we'll take that client response, uh, yes, and here we go, and we're going to body deflux that, and what will we be getting out of this one, you think? Movie events, one hopes, I, I think not so. mouse events. Not mouse events, that, I mean, that would be a fine, fine value, but I don't sure. think so. So let's see, what do we have here? So we're gonna flat map mini that, and then let's subscribe to that, Right? And then let's see what we have. Although. Pringles. Okay. Pringles. Print line. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, reactive, reactive programming and mouse events, you know, click events on a yeah. uh, click streams on a web application. That's actually a use case. Yeah, seems Maybe we seems just built our next, we just identified our next demo. So, so where, where are we here? I think. Yeah, two, we're running out. Semicolon. I think, I think that should be Quit sufficient, ahead. right? Se sem semicolon. Oh, I feel, yeah, good. <sighs> okay. Let's see what we have. I mean, if it doesn't work, we can always try it again, right? Uh, Come on, you can do it, you can do it. Look, it works. I'm so proud. Nice. All right. Very cool. So, that's awesome. We have, what do you think? Can we have like, nah, you say one minute, I say 10. Can we have like, just, like eight more minutes? Just, we'll meet somewhere in the middle at nine. Is that okay? Okay, good, good, It's okay. Good. I want to show you the security stuff, right? So we've got a web client, we've got a reactive web service. It'd be nice to show you the recently released Spring Security 5, uh, the, the first milestone of Spring Security 5, which also features and integrates uh, uh, reactive support, right? So let's go back to the service here, Ten. and we're going to add in the security stuff. Now again, we are going to do a little bit of low-level stuff here because the, the uh, security stuff, the reactive security, isn't in uh, Spring Boot yet. So we have to do a little bit of footwork ourselves. But the really nice part about this is that we have a reactive uh, runtime. Whoa! <laughs> Hold still. Uh, we have a reactive uh, runtime, and we don't want to lose all of that by then using traditional Spring Security, which has a thread local, which then you know, it sits on a thread, right? That doesn't work if we're trying to do this reactive API. So we're going to use the Spring Security Webflux module, as well as the config and the, the uh, uh, core. core, right? Yeah, so there's this and the config jar. And again, I expect a starter will come out of this eventually, but for our purposes, it suffices to leave that as is. And what I want to do is I want to now lock down access to our, our reactive service. I just want to do a very simple, here's HTTP basic. Uh, I want to you know, uh, lock it down and make sure that if, uh, if somebody makes a request to that service, that they have to authenticate and, pr and identify who they are. And then we use authorization to say if they are who they are and they have this permission or authority, then we'll let them hit this endpoint. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little configuration class, reactive security configuration. And the way we do this traditionally is we use a spring security filter chain based on the servlet API. Uh, but we don't need to do that here. We have in the, in the, rea the, uh, the uh, spring webflux API, we have this web, web filter, right? So we can say that I want to create a web filter. Whoa. And I'm going to use HTTP basic sorry, um, HTTP security.http, and I'm going to assign this to a variable. This is our builder API, right? So we know we're going to say HTTP.build, 
But what we need to do for this to work is we need to first of all tell it how to uh, how to answer the authentication authentication question is uh, basically when somebody knocks on our door they need to say who they are. That's called the authentication, right? So in this case, we're going to say HTTP dot authentication manager. And authentication manager, uh, in this case, is a reactive authentication manager, not the traditional uh, Spring Security authentication manager. Uh, so we need to create one of those. And when I'm going to answer the question using my own custom implementation uh, of what it needs. So I'm going to say reactive authentication manager, right? There's this. And you can see that it's just looking for a uh, Let's see, oh, sorry. It's looking for an implementation. So I'm going to use a user details repo repository authentication manager. This is like the DAO authentication provider in the Spring Security Classic world. And the DAO authentication provider expects a, uh, da a data access object, right? Well, we, today we would call DAOs um, repositories. So this is just a slightly cleaner way of saying it. Uh, and we're going to go, we're going to provide it a user details repository implementation. Now that user details repository implementation, you can provide, and, and you could use whatever you wanted uh, to store your very, very uh, critical, uh, sensitive, and secure uh, information. So for this reason, uh, we're not going to use Mongo, right? Now, it's actually just safer to keep it in memory and lose it on every single restart than it is to keep it in Mongo, right? So we're just going to use this. We're going to create our own little uh, user details repository. And the, the job here, the, the task, is very simple. Given a username, we turn a publisher that contains a user details object. This is a traditional Spring security type. And what we're, just do, what we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple map here, my little Mongo, light, and my, my, my Mongo with more features here, right? So um, map of users equals new concurrent hash map. And I'm just going to hit Alt Enter. I'm going to put some users in there. So put uh, MK heck, okay, and then we're going to create a list of scopes or uh, sorry of uh, authorities, admin uh, and guest. I'm yeah. not sure I can be trusted with that uh, with admin. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you better pull I that. I hope so. Ugh. Okay, we're going to actually do a one to one here. Okay, we're going to have map of users dot put desire and arrays dot as list admin guest cloud. Okay, uh, there we are. And of course, Mr. Security himself will have uh, uh, R. Winch, Rob Winch, the one and only, and um, all of it, right? Just give it all to him. So, <laughs> so what we want to say is, uh, uh, you know, we also want to have somebody who doesn't have the admin permission. So we'll add J. Long, just make him a guest, a visitor in this strange land. There we are. So there's that. And so you can see all of them, except for JLong, have the, the uh, admin per permission. So our job now is to say, OK, when somebody asks us for a username, what I'm going to say is return um, map of users dot get username. And I'm going to say, give me an empty uh, mono just or empty. So it's either a mono that has the value or it's nothing. And then I'm going to map that username you know, I'm going to ignore the username. I don't actually care. I know that it's there is what, is what I'm trying to do. I'll get a null or I'll get a value. If it's there, then I'm going to get the user using the username, right? And that gives me a list of um, roles, OK? Whoa. OK. And what I need to do now is to return a user object. So user, user equals new user. This is an implementation, a concrete implementation of the user details type. And here, I'm just going to return the username. I'm going to return a default password. It's probably fine. And we're going to return a collection of authorities. And again, we have these roles. So we'll just use this and map each role to a new simple granted authority, passing in our collecting this into a list that will then uh, feed into our, our, our type there, right? So there's our granted authorities, list of granted authorities, and we're going to pass that into that, OK? So there we go. There's our user, and we return user. Very good, OK? A little bit of uh, typing just to, to avoid using a proper database, OK? There we go. There's our, our little repository. 
implementation. Of course, this is a natural fit for a Lambda, so there's this as well. Not bad. We've got our user details repository. We've got this. So we now need that. And I'm going to tell it to use that at authentication manager. The final thing that I need to do is to, um, to authorize certain paths. So what I want to say is whenever somebody makes a request to forward slash asterisk asterisk, uh, also I want to say HTTP basic, right? I want to activate that as well. What I want to finally say is whenever somebody makes a request to uh, forward slash forward slash, I want to restrict access. Now traditionally, I would use a, a scope ID or a role ID, you know, role underscore admin or guest or whatever. But here in Java, uh, in, in the Reactive API, because it's built on Java 8, we can use lambdas here for the, uh, for the question about, you know, we could use Spring expression language, but now we can use lam lambdas, which I think is really convenient, right? So Reactive Authorization uh, Manager. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, when somebody asks us auth, when somebody gives us an auth mono with the current attempted uh, authentication, we use that. We say auth.map authentication. And then with the authentication, we're going to get the uh, authorities. That's the collection of granted authorities. And we're going to process that. We're going to say, if the authority has the, the authority uh, admin, let's use it. Right? Let's let it go through. So authentication.authorities.stream.inimatch a g a g a dot get authority dot equals admin. Right. So we're returning a boolean here. If it's present, and then we're going to take that boolean and map it into a authorization decision. So. Uh, oops, in here, sorry. Map. Okay. And, oh. Uh, B, new, simple, sorry, new authorization decision. Passing in B. There we are. Alt enter, replace with the lambda. Replace this. Get rid of all that. Wow. OK. Simple. I'm kidding. A little kidding. OK. Whew. Easy, right? Rolls right off the tongue. So there's that. Now, there's our API, and we can use lambdas here as well. Not bad. And now we can start the application up. We've got a little API. We've secured it. Let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. In theory, we should now be able to not make a request uh, just like we can't save our data, we can now make a not request to the endpoint here. So control, what is it now? Uh, here, okay. So curl, HTTP, min uh, curl minus V, control E, mm -hmm. local host, 8080, forward slash movies. Not authorized, right? Okay, we expected that. Control A minus u, and we're going to use r, we're going to use jlong and password, still not authorized. Let's try rwinch and uh, password. Rob would be mortified that my password is just password. <laughs> but there it is. We've actually gotten the data back as we expected. We've secured it using a reactive runtime. So today, my friends, my friend Mark and I, we looked at building a web, web application. We looked at uh, actually an end-to-end -end application. That's what's really key here. Using reactive programming, if any layer of the, of the stack is blocking, is not going to work. It's not going to give you a lot of benefits. You can do it, but it, you're losing a lot of the benefits. So this is end-to-end. -end. We went from the web tier, we secured it, went to, uh, to the web tier itself, went to the data access layer, went down all the way to the database drivers, and then back again. And at no point are we blocking. That gives us a lot of power, and it lets us scale out and manage long large amounts of data and, and to be more efficient about it per service. Yes. Anything else to add, my friend? Well, we should probably end with the uh, repo link again, which we closed out. So right. that's a little embarrassing. You all remembered everything we just typed, right? Right, yeah. Yeah? We, everything? Is, it's all in your head? Right, OK, in that case, okay. there's the code if you need it. Gracias, mis amigos, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Gracias. <laughs>